won, I won. And everybody within earshot heard that and were like, holy shit, that guy's Peter Griffin. And then my friends that I was with kind of like were off somewhere else getting an autograph from somebody. I, I don't know who it was. And they were like, what's all this commotion? They thought Stan Lee walked in or something, because I literally had a ring of people around me, and I never experienced anything like this in my life up until that point. Now, I've done it a million times, but um, it was just really, really funny how that was, you know, the birth of something so big and so instrumental in my life, because I figured that was my 15 minutes of fame. I was very much one of these fall to the cracks kind of like, kept to myself. I was, you know, funny with my friends and family, but like I wasn't like an outgoing guy like that. And I guess because it afforded me the ability to be somebody that I'm not, I just improvised that entire day as Peter Griffin. I didn't break character one second. I did the voice the entire day, five hours, walking around driving my friends crazy. And uh, we went home. We had a, It was like the most epic day of my life to, up until that point. And I figured that was it, you know, go back to my normal life, go back to my job. And it was a little bit of a while later, because that was October of 2012. And then I remember being at a 4th of July barbecue the very next year, and somebody said, you're trending on Reddit. And I was, first of all, I was like, what the hell is trending? And number two, I was like, I don't even have a Reddit. Like, how, how do they know who I am? So somebody had posted like a vertical video of me and it was like filmed on a potato of me doing some monologue as Peter Griffin in New York Comic Con. And people went nuts with it. It got like a half a million views. I was like, holy snap, I, I can't believe that people still are into this. So that very year, 2013, there was a con called Great Allentown Comic Con. And there was a costume contest. See, I was I, I, I do two costumes. I do Peter Griffin, and I also do a wrestler named Sergeant Slaughter because uh, he was also a G.I. Joe, and I was part of a G.I. Joe cosplay group called The Finest, and we were going to do a, a music video that they did in the, the show. We were going to recreate that. So I was dressed head to toe like Sergeant Slaughter and melted because the air conditioner was broken in this venue. I was sweating. I could see why Sergeant Slaughter was so cranky in the ring because I had to not breathe. And I, uh, I brought Peter Griffin with me because I figured, you know, people want to see this costume. I'm going to bring him to conventions with me from now on because it's more comfortable and it's something I could change into if I have to. So I changed it to Peter Griffin. I heard a commotion in like the panel room right next to where the bathrooms were where I changed. And I went over there and it happened to be the costume contest. And the two, ju two of the judges were um, Riddle, she, she calls herself Riddle, she's a famous cosplayer, and then uh, Nicole Marie Jean, who's another famous cosplayer. I didn't know them at the time. But I jumped on the back of the line, and I'm like cracking jokes here, and there's Peter, and I have people chuckling on the line and stuff. And then I get to the front, and I grab the microphone, and it's like, I like uh, two hot dogs, or mustard, wait, wait, wait. This is in the cafeteria. Tammy McMahon, you told me this was a cafeteria. And these girls are sitting there looking at me like, what is happening right now? Like, is, is this guy, like, for real? And, you know, I did my little spiel. I went to the back of the room, figuring, you know, just crashing the costume contest. I wasn't going to win. I was wearing green pants and a white shirt. It's not fair for me to win. <laughs> and they asked me to come back to the front. I was like, oh, great. They could probably yell at me for making all the jokes about everybody's costumes. <laughs> and they're like, can you keep the crowd entertained while we try to figure out who the winners are. Now, I had never like performed in a public forum like this where you just put me on the spot and I just had to get up and go, but somehow I was able to improvise my way through a stand-up routine as Peter Griffin, working the crowd. I had Goku LARPing against Superman in the crowd. It was, it was really very funny. And somebody from a website called Kotaku happened to be there and wrote a whole article and posted a video of me doing the stand-up routine. And that's what, that got even more views than the vertical video from New York Comic Con. I think that got like a million and a half views. I was like, damn, people really want this. So my, one of my best friends, Eric, that I used to work at my previous job at, um, went to Quinnipiac uh, College and two of his roommates were film students. And he showed them the video of me doing that stand-up routine. And they're like, we love this guy. 
we want to kind of do a deeper dive and find out, you know, why does he do this and, you know, how did this whole thing start? You know, like to tell the official story to really like the So he asked me, I, I remember I was, I was sitting by a pool at Dragon Con in Atlanta, Georgia, which if you've never been there, it's like nerdy gras. It's like a, literally like days of party, like four o'clock in the morning getting beers with Batman, party. And I was like, yeah, you know, what do I care? I was like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to get my own New York Comic Con tickets. I can't get them for other people. They're like, oh, don't worry about that. You know, they're just going to, they're going to follow you around with a camera. They're going to come to your house the night before, and they're just going to interview you. And they're going to ask you, you know, about Comic Con and why you go there. And what does it mean to you? And, and I did that interview, and I was very candid about it. You know, I've always been an open book. I'm not a bullshit artist. I, I've never been good at that. So I, uh, I laid it all out there. I was, you know, I'm, I'm a cosplayer because it makes me feel good. You know, I, I go back to my mundane job and I, and I live my mundane life, but then I go to these conventions and people are pulling out their phones like I'm some kind of celebrity. And it was, it was like this high that I was chasing almost. So uh, that was New York Comic Con 2014. We didn't post the video until January of 15th. They had... 20 plus hours of footage of me walking around in this interview and this and that and they whittled it down to like three minutes and change and we posted this video and my god did that thing go viral immediately i think by the end of the first or second day we had well over three million views to this day it's 17 million views and climbing that one video and that's what changed everything for me Inside Edition sent a car to my house and interviewed me at the Palisades Mall. Entertainment, people, I mean, you name it. If it was in a, a media outlet, there was an article about me. And the most surreal thing was that there were people talking about me in countries and languages that I, I can't speak. And it's like, blah, 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 Peter Griffin, blah, 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 Robert Francis. I'm like, these people are talking about me. Like, what did I do? I'm just dressed up like a cartoon character. I'm doing something that a million other people are doing, but. I guess what set me apart from like the typical cosplayer is that I personified the character. I was able to improvise, I was able to voice act and kind of pair all of that together to create the perfect storm. That's the real life Peter Griffin. And honestly, to this day, I mean, yes, you know, it's been financially kind to me over the years because I, I now I have Cameo, I have a, a monetized YouTube channel. And that wasn't a straight, you know, to stardom kind of thing. I, I, I've learned some hard lessons about life, about trusting friends, and, and you know, I've had to start over again multiple times. You know, when I created my LLC, my friends didn't want to do it anymore, so I ended up having to buy them out and start over. Then another friend kind of like took advantage of me kind of like undervaluing myself, because I've always, that's always been one of my, my biggest problems. I've always undervalued myself, and that's probably why I haven't gone further with the Peter Griffin thing. And I ended up having to create a whole new YouTube channel and a whole new um, Facebook page because that all got taken away from me. But from that, I don't know if it was spite or inspiration, but I ended up getting myself to learn how to edit my own videos, get the gear that I needed to shoot them professionally. And I'm a one-man production team now. And I have a silver play button on YouTube, which is insane. Um, I think I'm at 322,000 subscribers on YouTube. I got over 600,000 on TikTok now. That was another one that they kind of dragged me into and landed me back on um, uh, Inside Edition. Inside Edition ended up interviewing me a second time because of my TikTok because I did, hey, wow, it's diarrhea. And people, <laughs> 10 million views. You believe that? 10 million views. Hey, wow, it's diarrhea. Hey, one of my kids one day, hey, Dad, what's your legacy? Well, I uh, have a long story about that, you know. 